Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Joe Bora from Sports Fanatic News, and this is going to be our next NHL team preview on game day. It is that first day of the season. Let's get pumped, let's get excited, and let's get fired up as it is that first game of the NHL season day. And here I am to preview the Toronto Maple Leafs. This team is going to be a surefire, in my opinion, playoff team this year. Uh, potentially, if they can crack it all together, one of the better teams in the league, but definitely one of the better teams, top two, I believe, in their division. And that's because they added in some good assets. It's interesting that Joe Thornton could potentially play up on the first line of from what you've been seeing from reports but it makes sense he's a career great playmaker and if it works it works if not you just slot him down and he becomes your 3c or something along those lines in time anyway but this team is slated to be a very solid team they of course have Frederick Anderson in goal and Jack Campbell so uh, Anderson's just a guy that's been very very good and and I'm kind of a guy that even coming off of a little bit of an off year last year gets Talked about too harshly and is a guy that now that their defense, you got Zach Bogosian, a very nice, tough, uh, holds him down and body checks and blocks the hell out of a lot of shots guy back there. And TJ Brody back there, who does a very good job himself, provides some offense, plays some mean uh, defense back there and consistent defense as well. So I think those additions are going to help immensely. And then obviously coming up the pike, you got Nick Robertson, who produced 86 points in 46 games, doubled his output there. I mean, the dude, ridiculous. Timothy Lindgren might not be what he once was talked about, but I still think he's going to be able to provide some impact in the NHL and become a solid defenseman. He probably just won't be that top line or that superior defenseman that it was once thought about when he was picked. But, you know, it is what it is. Prospects develop differently. I still think he could have a hell of a career just to make it a little bit of a different level impact. They only had him projected when it was supposed to be 82 for six points coming up for a cup of coffee, but he's only 21. So if this was his cup of coffee year, next year would be the year that maybe when a Bogosian or somebody moves on or someone else, uh, you're able to uh, see what he can really do and supplant himself maybe next year. I'm still excited about him as a prospect and think he can be a four at least at this point still and I'm not going to drop down from that yet at this point. I think he could potentially still even be a three, but we'll have to see uh, as time goes on. And then obviously Rodion Amirov, the nice guy out of the KHL that they picked up from UFA in the KHL uh, that they got this year. So it'll be interesting to see how he develops over there and plays. But this team is set up for the present, and they also have set themselves up better for the future, even going into, <clears throat> even with, excuse me, the way they were able to put their cap kind of in a hell situation uh, by getting Tavares, even though it was a good move um, in order to bring in a John Tavares. He probably could have spread the wealth back then, and I know some Toronto fans felt the same that way. But now you're finally able to get the team you would want around John Tavares anyway. You have Joe Thornton to go really three deep at center since Jason Spezza's a very nice commodity, but isn't even really still what Joe Thornton is at this point, and is a notch below him as a good, consistent point line center, good to win your faceoffs, good to scrap, good to battle, as a former great player that still has all the great tools and the student of the game to be a very, very good guy out there. Wayne Simmons was a very underrated pickup. He's a hell of a guy to have in your locker room. Um, he's a guy that's going to make an impact on that team and also bring a lot more physicality, grit, and forechecking to that team, which is something they really needed. And then Joey Anderson's a guy they added is one of those scrapper players, those guys that just uh, – goes 150% out there. He's a guy that doesn't have all the skill, obviously. He's a quicker skater, but he puts in all the effort to make up for that skill, and he's one of those guys you like to have around, have on your team for those specific reasons, among others. But I foresee this team finishing second in the North Division. I think uh, the reason being is when you have a lot of guys come in that change it up and you have a completely different season than this, that is not going to have a pre... We obviously didn't have a preseason, and then we, of course, did not have a normal camp. So I think bringing in these different changes, it might take the 10 to 15 game adjustment period. And then if a team like the Vancouver Canucks, the Oilers, the Canadians, the Jets, somebody else like that, um, even some people throw the flames in there, are able to actually generate something earlier, that could just be the difference of a few games in the end of the season, since we have to remember it's key. We're only playing 56. We ain't playing close to 82. So that is a big difference there if you're able to not adjust until the first 10 to 15 games compared to a team that comes out rocking and socking in the first 10 to 15 games. 
But this has been the NHL team preview for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I hope you all enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And get hype, get pumped. It is the first day of the NHL season. It is here. The bright lights are out on the stadium. Have a great and safe, pleasant day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric. Peace out.